What's the dad? He's scarier. He's kind of big. He's gonna, um, like, bite you. <laughs> he's gonna hit me with his wing. That's what they do. Is that the mom in front? Nope. That's, um, baby number three, I believe. Okay. I can kind of tell because of his weird beak. Can you move? Oh, oh. Dad doesn't like her. Okay, Dad. Let's get up real quick. Get up! Can you get up real quick? He's gonna bite me. Well... Uh, pigeons had two more eggs. Oh no. And now the eggs are more <laughs> pigeons. And now I have seven pigeons. <laughs> which is more than I know what to do with. <gasps> I kind of see him. Yeah, you can kind of see him under there. Okay, Papa. Okay. <gasps> they're so tiny. Yeah, they're pretty gross looking too. Can you see them good? Yeah. They're pretty sleepy. I'll let you stay on them. Wow. He's a good dad though. He takes care of them. Mom's right there. I tell her Bart because she has a frayed tail, which is something that sometimes they get. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Don't step on your babies. Initially, I just got a pair of pigeons and then one got sick and passed away and I got another one. There was two eggs that were laid and they hatched pretty much at the same time and they were super ugly and now they're about eight weeks old. Then there was a, another egg that was laid about four weeks ago. Well, it hatched four weeks ago and now there's three babies. And then a couple weeks ago, there was two more eggs laid and then they just hatched a few days ago. That's a lot of pigeons. <laughs> yeah, and I'm afraid they're not gonna stop and there's gonna be more pigeons after this as well. But this is baby number three. The, okay. The, the singleton? The newest. Yeah, the only child, the one that was born um, a couple weeks ago. He's pretty big. They're all bigger than their mom because the dad is huge. Which means that these two were the ones born together. Yeah, I mean, they're so cute. I, I really like them. <laughs> they just Eventually keep making more. Cramped. Yeah, mom and dad are pretty active. Look at all those pigeons. Look at that. If any of you are interested in actually adopting any of these, because I'm kind of running out of room here, then just message us on Instagram and we'll get back to you about it. I'm not able to ship them anywhere, so it would only be people who are here in Arizona. At this young of an age where even just the one that was just born, which is like three to four weeks old at this point, and then these babies were just born a few days ago, and even the ones that are still like eight or nine weeks old, they're really impressionable and they can form really strong bonds. Um, they're really compassionate birds. They make really great pets um, as long as you take care of them well. I did a ton of research and initially I was going to keep one inside as a pet, but then that didn't really work out. I went off to college and they don't allow pigeons, so now I have too many. We were young and we were free and running, never bothered about what could be coming. Every day we danced and life was smiling, we were young and drunk in love. built the best craft ever. You ready for it? He finally put fences in my walkway, which we still need to fix up a little bit. We need to put a gate in there, but so that I can let the milking does out and nobody fights or gets in the way. <laughs> it's a miracle. It's amazing. So we've got these three ladies. All I do is let them out. That's all I do. And, and then I just... Race. And then it's a race, and it's always Prim that's first. Prim gets to go first. And then Reba goes in, and Reba has gotten over her aversion to eating over in that area. <laughs> she had a weird couple months, but she's okay now. They go right in their spots, and then Daphne likes to be waiting behind. Yeah, she likes to come last. You okay down there? She takes her time, walks slow. She hangs out and waits her turn.
I really like this milky machine. I never thought I'd really get used to one. It definitely takes a lot of cleaning, I would say, but it goes so fast. So that makes it sort of worth it. Right here, I just have to get the last squirts out by hand to make sure that she's fully emptied out because if we don't empty her all the way out, then she won't produce as much the next time. So this is how you keep the production up is by milking them out. Some does will milk down what we call like to a rag where it's like a lit, it looks like a limp rag and some have more tissue in them. The more desirable one is the limping, the more desirable one is the down to a rag. But I've never really had a goat do that as much. So maybe Daphne is closest to that. Okay, bye Prim. Come on, your turn. Look at that. She's so good. Daphne is the best. Okay, you know the way out. Come on. See you later, have a good day. Willow has adopted a second stump here because one stump's not big enough. Oh, and look, the chicken's sometimes good on it. So she has like a two-story stump. <laughs> and she really likes rubbing her head on the pole on her second stump. I know, we save you to the last. So sad. Come over here. <laughs> she knows the routine, she's so good. You're such a good girl. Reba does not like being hand milked. So I have to hold this bucket up. She's privileged. She, she doesn't realize how good. <laughs> She's just not like the old ladies that have been had to be hand milked their whole lives. Oh yeah. She's spoiled. Bye. See you later. And then they go back really easy in their little corridor. Watch this. Go on back there. Eventually she makes it back. After she says hi to a couple people. You guys know we have a front yard orchard, right? But did you know that we have a pear, an avocado, and an apple tree in the backyard? We've got a good little batch of apples going, and while the birds did get a few of them, that's okay because we have Tilly. Is that good? Tilly, do you have an apple? That yummy. <laughs> she has the whole apple in her mouth. You can't eat that, baby. Can you eat that whole thing? I think it's too big. <laughs> She's trying. She'll get it eventually. She's gonna give her a little bite sized one. Eat it. It might be big for you. Kinda... Oh, she got it. Yeah, she got it. Oh. I think only a big goat can eat it. <laughs> and guys, there is nothing better than caramel to go with apples. So today, yes guys, we are making cajeta, which is a Mexican caramel sauce or caramel, whichever way you like to pronounce it. And it all starts with fresh goat's milk and some sugar and some cinnamon sticks. Now this usually takes a good couple of hours to make. So when you make this, you just have to realize you're gonna be standing by the stove for a good while. First we have to get it to a simmer and once we get it just steamy, which is basically what a simmer is, we're gonna add some baking soda mixed with some more of the goat's milk. Basically what we're trying to do is condense this milk down. And so that's what we do. We cook, sometimes it rises way up to the top. That just means we need to turn down the heat a little bit, but it just keeps sort of just, just boiling or just under boiling as we cook off all of that liquid. As we continue to cook it, it gets darker and darker and thicker until it starts to resemble a nice thick caramel sauce. 
the cinnamon, in my opinion, is really the key to making this authentically. You'll see a lot of recipes for cajeta that just has goat's milk and sugar, but you have to have the cinnamon stick. And I have to thank a viewer who sent me three packs of these cinnamon sticks so that I could make all the cajeta in the world. I'm so happy. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Once we get to a nice thick sauce, we'll finish it off by adding some vanilla and then some flaky sea salt. Guys, this is so good when it cools. Oh, so good. And I always have to make extra for friends because that's what you do when you make something this delicious. And no, I don't sell it, but I made these labels just because it makes me happy <laughs> to see it look like a finished product. Plus it has cute little baby Tatum on there, which oh, so adorable. And let me tell you guys, this goes perfect with our fresh apples. I did look into selling it. It's a whole huge big process because it's a milk product. So you can't you can't sell it easily. You need to get all the FDA and all this stuff involved. So it gets really ridiculous trying to sell anything with milk in it. So I'll put the recipe in the description below if you happen to get your hands on goat's milk and some cinnamon sticks. Then try it out. Let me know what you think. One thing that we haven't really shared with you guys is that we all love thrift stores. We're like obsessed with them. And we've liked it before it was cool actually. So <laughs> it's actually Kevin's birthday today. He's officially 35 years old. Just kidding, he's 45, but. But we're gonna show you guys all of the cool finds, all of the cool things that we found at the thrift store today. Okay. So Lydia, you're up first, go. For me, my stuff, well, I've been getting back into crochet, so I got a thing of yarn just for fun to have new colors. Oh, shoes. She's a shoe person. I'm a shoe person. Always have to find Sorry. shoes. And then I found this cool new backpack. backpack. It's like new, too. For college. That's pretty much it. For okay, college. Ethan, what'd you find? I got movies, because I like movies. So I got a bunch of DVDs of random movies. Fantastic Mr. Fox. Uh, I'm gonna make it because it's so bad, but me and Lydia <laughs> like, like it because it's your twilight. it's uh, nostalgic that it's so bad. Uh, Lord of the Rings, all three. Nice. Robots. Oh, and also a Dungeons also and Dragons. A Dungeons and Dragons kit thing. What did Kevin find? Is there anything on the back? No. Nope. Just nope. it's up to you to say what you've decided. Decided to play games. All right. And I always go to like the home houseware goods section because I'm trying to find like antiques and stuff. So I found this really cool butter dish that I'm actually not gonna use as a butter dish. I'm just gonna put it up somewhere. Found a cool like, uh, I don't know, thing. Best. And this is my favorite thing. It's a little bit broken, but basically it's this really cool like old mirror that somebody wrote a whole message that has a lot of bad words that probably shouldn't show it on here. <laughs> but I can get that message off and, and cool look how cool that is. That's a cool mirror, right? And I also got a Renaissance Festival hoodie. So that's it. That's our find for this thrift store shopping experience. Let's see who's going to eat this apple. Is it going to be Willow? She's pretty picky. <gasps> You're gonna eat it! Good job! Yum. Let's see if you actually chew it. Sorry Luna, that's all I have. It's sometimes kind of difficult when you have different goats with different nutritional needs. Like we have Luna and Willow who need to have more of a grass diet, whereas the milkers need more of an alfalfa diet. So we decided to split up the goats and have our grass eaters eat all of the pasture that's getting overrun and then have the milkers get the alfalfa. Goats love anything green, so they love leaves and bushes and weeds and trees and shrubs and all of that, but they most mostly love alfalfa, the really rich grass. Right now it's summer and we've had irrigation so we have lots of really good grass and weeds out here, but they won't eat it if alfalfa is available to them. So we have to sort of encourage them to eat the pasture when they need to be eating the pasture. So currently in the pasture we have Luna, Willow, and Tilly who are the three retired ladies. We also have Tatum and her daughter Lola. They're gonna leave soon but haven't left yet so they're out in the pasture. 
And then we also have Honey, who is Tilly's kid, Doling, that we're gonna keep this year. And she's out here because, well, Tilly feeds her a lot and she kind of just needs to be on a grass diet for a little bit. Then we have the milkers in the nursery and they're hanging out in there getting the best hay possible. And then we have the youngest group of junior dolings in the very back pen and that's so that they can have a little bit different type of feed and then they can be separated from their mamas. So it's a little bit tricky. We also have the two bucks over here in their separate pens. Last year I chose to separate my bucks because bucks just fight constantly and try to injure each other. In the wild, when you look at goat herds, the bucks actually live solitary lives. They don't live with the herd throughout the year. They only live with the herd during breeding season, then they go off and they are solitary. They don't prefer companionship because they're very aggressive. They like to fight all the time. And we've noticed that here on our little farm when you domesticate goats. So last year when I separated them and I put the bucks in their own pen, it was like instant peace here. The bucks were happy, there was no more fighting, and they don't cry for a companion. They like when the girls come visit them when the girls are in heat, but other than that, they just wanna fight everything and everybody, so it's better for them to be at peace and be alone. I'll be the spokes model. Whoa! <laughs> nice! You kids said I couldn't get all this stuff to go to Flagstaff to take you guys to college. What do you think now? Is this legal? <laughs> <laughs> of course. You welded it? Did you bolt it? Bolted it on right there. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Ready? Whoa! Oh my gosh. You wel wait, you welded it to the actual thing? Love it to this thing. It just, wow. it just slides out of your receiver hitch. Boom. So this is a cheap truck that gets really good gas mileage, but it's kind of a smaller bed. So what do I do? I make the bed twice as big. <laughs> and you're sure it can carry like? Yes. Okay. So these are rated for 500 pounds. The truck can do 1,500 pounds, Lydia. So, 1,500 pounds, it's hard to fit in a small area, but if you extend it, oh then you can put tons of stuff to go to college. Can you tell Dad's really excited about? I think he's really excited. <laughs> to take you guys to college with all your stuff. <laughs> Will it get fit? There and it's all gonna have fallen out. <laughs> no. Oh my goodness. We're gonna tie it down, tie okay. it. She's not going nowhere. nowhere.